but we just want a little bit more time on that. <clears throat> and the reason for the time is because these things are strengthening virtually on a daily basis. That is the bill, but what is the important component that goes with that is a thing called a deed of ecclesiastical dishonour. And I'm just this is going to be the last thing I talk about before I ask for questions. So thank you. I know I've run out of time here, but I appreciate it. And I will um, still give an hour's quick Q&A. So what we say, excuse me, with a deed of ecclesiastical dishonour is that rather than sending a notice, if you send a notice, then you need a notary. Remembering their system is using ecclesiastical power mixed with bank powers to uh, use those things against us. We don't want to be using notaries. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use the powers that we have. And the powers we have is we already have trusts set up for us. So a deed of ecclesiastical dishonour gives us an enormous power. What it does specifically, is it says, because you have breached your fiduciary duties and because I am a divine immortal spirit and I have demonstrated with my blood thumbprint on blue paper, instead of simply sending your notice and saying you're a naughty boy or a naughty girl for doing that, I'm going to strip by the right I have ensure that through this deed your rights are stripped in three specific ways and I'll read three paragraphs out and then, then I'll explain what it means and then I'll stop. So the second paragraph of a deed of ecclesiastical dishonour says this, as the trustees, executors and administrators so identified have deliberately committed a grave sin in the form of an ecclesiastical dishonour all rights associated with their ecclesiastical duties of office are hereby forfeit and returned to the divine creator. The next paragraph. As the trustees, executors and administrators so identified have deliberately committed a grave sin in the form of an ecclesiastical dishonour, all rights associated with entry and the conduct of activities within circumscribed ecclesiastical spaces, which is their office and the court, are hereby forfeit and return to the divine creator. And the final one, as the trustees, executives and administrators so identified have deliberately committed a grave sin in the form of an ecclesiastical dishonour, all rights associated with all fiduciary duties associated with the conveyance of property are hereby forfeit and return to the divine creator. Remember, who has the highest property rights? We do. We have the high claim. We have challenged and we have abrogated all the rights of the Vatican. We hold all property rights. We hold the highest ecclesiastical authority. Therefore, this deed issued by you has absolute authority. So rather than waiting for them to deny that they are in dishonour, we ensure by deed that their rights have been stripped they are now dead in the water. They cannot perform their duties. Will they ignore it? Of course they will. Of course they'll ignore this. Even though they know the importance of it, it, is, it they will deny it to the very end, to the 11th hour, to the 12th hour. But in terms of systematic, forensic, systematic um, procedures, this deed strips them of their authority. And the next one after that will be the, the ecclesiastical deed of protest uh, where we ultimately, um, by stripping them and proving that we are competent and that the property no longer exists, we in fact will put in position that the deed, the, the, sorry, the Sesta KVs uh, are no longer valid. So I look forward to going through those. I look forward to you being able to get those on the site. The best place to go for update information is the university, full stop, Eucadia, full stop info site. That's the university, full stop, Eucadia, full stop info site. That will give you the latest updates. And uh, I look forward to completing these step-by-steps for all of you. As we discussed at the last talk, Shu, 
a process that takes about 100 days, 110 days, where you perfect your liens, you perfect the dishonour, and you are able to bank that money. So thank you all uh, a lot tonight once again, and I'm open to questions. Thanks. Okay, Frank, thank you. Um, this is Terry. I've got a question from a guest um, going back to the court situation. How do you plead? I am not the trustee or fiduciary for that constructive trust. I do not wish to trespass upon those offices. So how do you plead? Uh, they, okay, <clears throat> remember, they, they're playing a game. And their game is to shut you down and to give you minimum opportunity to respond. And I think what people need to understand is how the nature of... Before I answer that, I, need, I think we need to remind people that there are three forms of law, three forms of court, if you like, that you may face. And the judges are now very comfortable in shifting from the first to the second form. And I, I want to answer that first so you understand exactly what happened. Because on the YouTube video, the fellow that was trying to establish his position completely missed what happened. And it, it relates to this word called recess and the word adjourn. Understand that the first form of court you go into, you're merely dealing with the commercial, universal commercial code. They can't put you in prison in that first form of court. They can't. It's purely commercial. It's about fines, money and property. They have to run out of the court and return to the second form of court, which now puts them under maritime or canon law before they can then say, Mr. Jones, if you don't sit down and be quiet, I will charge you with contempt. And then, of course, they end up charging with contempt. So I, I, I wanted people to be aware of that. When, they, when the bailiff... Uh, or when the, uh, usually the bailiff, calls out that we, there'll be a brief recess, you must understand, I, I, I do not, con I let it be on the record, I do not consent to the judge changing the form of law of the court to amnesty, or I do not consent to the form of the law being changed to canon law and amnesty. So that it is on the record that you have stated you know that they have switched, they've done a bait and switch on you as that judge is running out of that courtroom. Why? Because she or he is going to come back in there and order a psych evaluation or, and order a contempt charge against you. They're basically going for a bigger stick. So you need to be careful. You need to be respectful. If you go into that court and start bludgeoning them, thinking that you have rights and they're going to respect them, they'll be going for the bigger stick. And I've said this before, but people still forget this. They think when a court, when a judge runs out, it's funny, and that they're on the they're on the ascendancy. No, when that court, when that judge runs out, you have done something that ultimately has uh, forced them to go for that rather than come to some mediated dismissal of the case. You, you've made some error because they are going to come back in and they're going to use it against you. So the, the simple answer is when you're talking about pleas, you need to be very respectful and say, uh, uh, Your Honour, um, uh, I, I, I wish to firstly ask, please, as a matter of law, are you presiding as trustee of this matter as a constructive trust, as a trust. The judge, will, the judge if they're like most judges, will say, uh, I'm not here to answer that. I've asked for your plea. How do you plea? And then you say, uh, you, you, Your Honour, without uh, seeking an appeal on a matter of law to another court, I, I merely ask, uh, I, are you presiding as the uh, trustee of this matter as the as a constructive trust or in fact as the administrator of the SESTA KVs 
from which the trust is the trust is created. And if they're a, a bully, they say. Uh, they, remember, they cannot in the first form of of court. They cannot. It's all commercial. They can threaten you, but if they are absolutely frustrated, they will leave. The bailiff will say there's a brief recess, in which you say, uh, I wish for the record to object to the judge changing the form of the law, and I will reassert my rights on return, on their return. So it's on the record that you have objected, you know what they're doing, and you're about to reassert your rights, because when they come back in, it's a brand new court. It's as if nothing you've said has even been on the record. It's their games. It's a, it's a, look, this is stupidity. It shouldn't be there, but this is the fact of dealing with their rules that are only loosely based on the principles of law. So that's why ultimately you don't ever want to get to court because you're basically dealing with people that make it up as they go along. So I've given an answer. I know it's long-winded, but I just want people to be very sensitive to this, that um, the weakness of the judge is that you can let the judge know that if they break the rules, you will be appealing on that point of law. And you can make the judge aware throughout the proceedings that you will be making an appeal because you know they've broken a principle. And you've, you will almost always find the judge stops themselves, sometimes even apologises, and then you move forward. So sorry it's a long way to answer, but hopefully that answers that question of pleading. Pleading, many ways to plead, but the simplest, and I've, I gave an example last week, which was a bit of a dissertation, which is... Um, which was, uh, what is your name? But what you've asked is, how do you plead? In both cases, you have every right to ask for information as a matter of law before you proceed. So that's my answer. Well, actually, Frank, also, the, um, the uh, they're really under the UCC, which is the first phase of the court, there, the two things have occurred. Um, did not show the nature and cause for a charge, and also you've not been properly served. So those are actually two things that really do not allow for proper pleading. Um, so you really cannot plea, actually. So you do ask actual questions so that you know the standing and that you can establish their standing and your standing, correct? Absolutely, and I think the key words, because remember what we've revealed in this talk show, the weakness for the judge is the judge can be the ultimate bully, the biggest bully you've ever seen. But if you telegraph to that judge that you will be lodging an appeal, then you've basically told that judge that they are going to be out of pocket indirectly. Yeah? They're not going to get their commission because if they are stuffing things up and ramroading you, then it will be overturned on a matter of law. Absolutely will be overturned. And judges are smart enough to know that. Look, if they're going to be a bully, they may not like you, which is another reason why everyone should always be respectful. There's no point in rubbing their nose in it. It's silly. Don't do that. I mean, at the end of the day, the judge might say, to hell with it. I don't like you. I know I'm breaking my own rules, but I'm just going to ramroad you and watch what I can do. So I just think uh, there's a bit of music across the right at the moment. There's a wedding coming up, so uh, next-door neighbours are getting a, a marriage, so there's drums in the background, I'm sorry. But I would say um, make sure you say as a matter of law. That's the key. As a matter of law is the key thing you want to say. I wish to ask as a question. Okay. Yeah. Far away. And, and then on and for the record. Just as a reminder for the callers, um, if you'll star eight, press star key in the eight, uh, so you can get in the question and answer queue if you have questions, and that way I can unmute you in order and uh, ask for your question. I have now, a, Terry, uh, yeah. I'm just quickly, if, if I'm literally going to be probably one minute, I'm just going to put uh, little doggies away because they're barking at the music, so I'm literally going to be one minute, I'll mute, and then I'll okay. come back and we'll keep going through the questions. So... If Brian's there or you want to have a bit of a comment to anyone, I'll be back in one minute, okay? Okay. Thanks, Brian. Okay. One sec. Okay. Real quick, I see a Northern Virginia 
looks like you put uh, yourself in the queue. I'm not sure.